If there is one positive about the 21st century of NASCAR that remains today, it's easily the increase in driver safety. After the deaths of Adam Petty, Kenny Irwin, and seven-time NASCAR champion Dale Earnhardt, the sport started investing money in order to protect its drivers from injuries and potential death behind the wheel. Innovations such as the Hans device, the five-point harness, as well as safer barriers have come a long way. The final puzzle piece relied in the car of tomorrow as despite the lackluster racing it put on, the car made a tremendous positive action to improving driver safety. The design was a lot boxier than the Gen 4 car as it was designed to feature crumple zones and energy absorbent foam to soften impacts. All of these combined actions have been a success story for NASCAR as since the 2001 Daytona 500 that saw the sport lose an icon, there have been zero fatalities in NASCAR's top three divisions. Time and time again, we've seen our favorite drivers walk away from demolished race cars after a hard impact with the wall and have been welcomed by cheers instead of prayers heading to the ambulance. Sadly, this claim cannot be translated to the highways and side streets of America, as over 18,000 people died on U.S. roadways from the first six months of yesteryear. With street vehicles moving at roughly one-fourth the speed of a NASCAR stock car, it is certainly puzzling how automakers haven't caught the eye of the top racing series and pushed forth a serious effort to make our personal cars and highways similar to NASCAR. So with this video, I'm going to discuss my ideas to improve this aspect on the road and hopefully generate an ongoing discussion and debate here on YouTube. Make sure to leave a like on this video as it should be a good one. The first concept idea in mind would be to add some sort of a roll cage to existing street vehicles as the current roof structures today are not getting the job done. As part of a NHTSA report, although rollover crashes account for only 3% of vehicles in accidents, they lead to approximately one-third of all occupant deaths. Compared to street vehicles, NASCAR roll cages feature durability and strength, as they do a tremendous job guarding the driver during a rollover. You see it in today's NASCAR as the roll cage maintains the integrity during a wreck as it stays sturdy after hitting the pavement upside down. One key example is the Aaron's 499 as the top of Carl Edwards' car takes a nasty hit with the catch fence. Luckily, the roof structure stayed pretty well intact and Cousin Carl finished the race on his own two feet. The structures also do a great job of keeping the drivers and the seat within the enclosed bars. To add to that claim, the front segment of a NASCAR roll cage features a smart safety measure that increases the chances of walking away unscathed. The front clip of the roll cage features the job of pushing the engine out of the bottom of the car, rather than into the driver's compartment. In other words, this area prevents debris from getting into the car and also provides somewhat of a protective shield for the driver and passengers. The 2010 Pocono July race features a great example as the front of Elliott Sadler's car was smashed to smithereens when he slammed the inside wall. Fortunately, the engine as well as the front car structures were stopped with this method, and Elliott Sadler walked away from the crash only shaken up from the hard impact. Now, with the roll cage aspect, I would like to see modern day vehicles have a tighter seatbelt similar to ones NASCAR currently uses in its race cars. The league utilizes a five point harness as two straps come over the driver's shoulders, two straps wrap around the waist, and one comes up between the legs. Compared to the polyester method, the nylon webbing is more durable than the everyday belt. It does a greater job of preventing the passenger from flying out, and I think automakers should switch to this fabric in the long run. Now, for street cars, the leg component might not be needed, but for the other elements, the nylon fabric should be added to keep passengers more secure. As for the passenger and side doors, it would be good if we could see that blue energy-resistant foam added to the cars. It's like putting a pillow on the side of the cars as it definitely softens the impact and it definitely protects the drivers inside from getting damaged from an ongoing collision. 
On the NASCAR side, you can see its protection with Brian Vickers at the 2011 Southern 500, as it essentially protects himself from getting any further damage after David Reagan absolutely rips the left side of Brian Vickers' car. Finally, I think implementing safer barriers at every highway in America would be a great idea. Known as the Steel and Foam Energy Reduction Barrier, this wall consists of a high-strength tubular steel skin that distributes the impact load to energy-absorbing foam cartilages in order to reduce the severity of the impact, extend the impact event, and provide the driver additional protection. In other words, these structures slow down the impact, which increases the driver's chance of survival. Compared to concrete walls, it is a massive lifesaver and should certainly be utilized on the road. When you compare crashes in the early 2000s to the modern day NASCAR, you can tell that today's crashes are definitely slowed down, and it ultimately protects the drivers from sustaining multiple injuries. Unfortunately, while these outcomes should be a no-brainer, there are some huge negatives and huge hurdles preventing action with driver safety, particularly the cases I just mentioned. With this debate over car safety, I figured these counteractions should be noted in order to paint the full picture for the audience. With the addition of a roll cage, the stronger structure is no doubt going to drive up costs in existing vehicles. According to Kelly Blue Book, car prices have jumped 2% since 2017 and with the implication of the roll cage, prices are going to skyrocket with the new enhancements. This leads to even more issues, especially with the millennial generation here in the United States. To many automakers, this is the target demographic, and recent trends have shown that millennials today tend to drive cheaper sedans over the more popular SUVs and trucks of their elder generations. If a company like Chevrolet decides to implement a roll cage to a car like the Malibu or the Camaro, it's going to increase costs and quite possibly drive away the core demographic it needs to make profits. Certainly, it's a huge risk for a company like General Motors that has seen profits dip since the Great Recession. Another obstacle relies in the comfort of the driver as, for the most part, NASCAR stock cars are built for aerodynamics and durability, not comfort. Now, while safety is a high priority among families in this 21st century, they also don't want to drive a vehicle that crams them in like sardines in a tin can. Kids and adults alike value personal space, and ultimately Toyota and Ford are going to focus on comfort and technological efforts before they focus on safety and before they advertise that to the main buyer. If one of these companies put out a NASCAR safe vehicle to withstand every single crash, ultimately the main buyer would find that yes, the car is safe, but it lacks the technological, it lacks the comfort, it lacks the true thing that families enjoy when going on a car trip. It would more than likely make these cars a massive flop and it would lose these automakers even more money. As for safer walls, there is indeed a huge barrier between the idea and reality, and once again, it relies with money. Just installing these safer walls requires 125 pounds of steel per foot at the cost of $303.50 a foot, and because of the price, many of the local racetracks across America have been hesitant to go through with these innovations. For these local tracks, it would require admission to get raised for a huge project like that, and ultimately, it could lose those fans that come out and support the local Saturday night short track racing every single week. And that is why most speedways still utilize concrete walls. So now you add over 164,000 miles of highway in the United States, the final bill is not going to be cheap and it is going to cost taxpayers and all government fortunes to enforce. For those of you that follow politics, it is going to be a bloodbath to even propose this idea on the Senator House floor. The most realistic outcome from my point of view would be another national emergency. But even then, a major plan involving billions of dollars will see a slew of legal battles, and it likely wouldn't see the light of day very long. 
So there you have it, the debate on NASCAR safety in street vehicles. Lots of NASCAR's innovations are massive improvements compared to road vehicles and could lead to a steep decline in deaths and casualties. And we could see more civilians walk away unscathed and only have to worry about paying for a new car or going into legal battles. Seeing how they were toying with death, it could be a lot worse for those people. Unfortunately, it is an uphill battle to get to the pole position on safety. Money is always a driving factor, especially with the rising economy and staggering competition on the market. Roll cages and safer barriers are going to cost money, and it is ultimately going to put them behind things and ideas that do make a profit and are cheaper and are way more efficient moving forward. The only options that are cheap and affordable in the long run are going to be the roof flaps as well as the tighter seatbelts. In the long run, I sincerely hope companies like Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota can learn a little bit from the NASCAR Cup Series, and they can ultimately make our lives safer on the road. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions on this deal as this is a social advocacy project that oftentimes gets overlooked as safety is one of the biggest priorities when you step out onto the highway. So anyways, this is NRF signing out and just remember, life's a beach and then you drive.